Have you ever been in a situation where you are asked to create a website for your company that's going to tie within your company, but yet they want it to be a separate website, a website that's not part of the mainstream, but kind of linked or attached to the mainstream website. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're a school like we are, Abco Technology. You know, now ABCO Technology has their, their main website at abcotechnology.edu. And we have alumni. So now our, our school director wants to create an, an alumni website, which will, be, which will have its link on the main website, but it will be a separate website. Now, here, most people may think that it has to be on a different web server or they have to create a separate account, and not quite. So I'm going to explain to you first that when you type a URL, like abcotechnology.edu, and by the way, banks, companies, they do these, this type thing all the time, okay? So you start with abcotechnology.edu, and now you say, okay, I want to create an alumni website. So that abcotechnology.edu, which is part of the domain, that's called the namespace of the domain. That's how your company is recognized. So Microsoft.com, it's their namespace of Microsoft.com. Uh, you know. Then before that, the www is like the standard used for the web, and that's usually their host. So when you're creating a website that you want it to be part of the mainstream, but yet in its own separate thing, you have to decide whether you want the same namespace or you want a different namespace, okay? So like, for instance, I gave you the example of alumni. It will be, be alumni.abcotechnology.edu. So now, you see abcotechnology.edu is still the same. But what's changed, that our mainstream website is at www, but this one is just at alumni.abcotechnology.edu. Now, some people say this is a subdomain. Yes, it is a subdomain, but the real definition is that it's called a parked domain. So, like a park, you know, P A R K E D. So, parked domain is a domain which could be on the same server but works and functions like a separate domain, but it has the same contiguous namespace. So, like students.abcotechnology.edu. Cybersecurity.abcotechnology.edu. You know, all these could be these could be domains, which means each one of them will be an altogether different website, but they can all have links on the main website. So what it's good for your search engine optimization because because Google or any other spider they don't recognize that it's coming from the same place. Not quite. So basically, that's one of the things that you could do. Similar to that is an add-on domain. And this also, for those of you who do not know, this can also go on the same server. So here I have abcotechnology.edu. And then all of a sudden our company says, you know what? We are going to start Abco Consulting, which would be a consulting services, or Abco Transition Services for those who are transitioning from our student life to a career life. So we could have abcotransitionservices.com. Now you notice here I have abcotechnology.edu and here you have abcotransitionservices.com. You see that? Here I'm going to talk about training. Here I'm going to talk about all the tools that Abco provides. Even though they're both websites of the same company, but they have completely separate URLs. And to the viewers, they will look like two separate websites, but coming from the same server. So you don't have to go and make any extra payments or bill any other, you know, or, or have an extra bills. They can all be hosted from the same machine. Now, this separate domain name is called an add-on domain. So you have a parked domain, which has the same contiguous namespace, and you have an add-on domain, which has a completely separate namespace. But they are both on the same server, and you'll notice that they, will, they can be functioned as a fully functional website. And today, I'm going to show you how to create a parked domain on the mainstream server and then go straight to creating or installing WordPress on it and then logging in through WordPress. So are we ready? Let's go. So I'm, I'm now transitioning to my screen here. 
And the first step that we are going to do is to begin is to go into our hosting companies. Every website is hosted on a server, as you know. So we have to go to their cPanel. Every hosting company provides you a cPanel. If you have a hosting server, you know how to log into your cPanel. Like you can see right now that my screen is logging into a cPanel. This is my cPanel. Now here, before you create a subdomain or a parked domain, you need to know that you must have a user account and a password to log in someone that can post or upload files to that server because obviously the files you're going to create will be on the server. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to first start out with domains. So if you look at my screen here, I'm clicking on domains. And once I click on domains, you see there's some website domains that are coming here for APCO. And what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and create a new domain uh, from there. So it says, you know, over here it says register a new domain, transfer a new domain, assign a, a domain to your cPanel account. You know, so basically you can do different things all at the same time. Registration is when you want to register a domain for outside. We don't need to do that because we, appcotechnology.edu is already there. So that's what register a new domain is. What we are doing here is we're going to assign a domain to a cPanel account. We're not going to transfer either because transferring is, means it's on a separate server. So use a domain that is already associated with your account. Use a domain that is not associated. That's the add-on. So we're going to use a domain that is associated with our account. And basically, what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and create the domain. Uh, so please type a valid domain name. And notice, it will then ask me, is it a parked domain or not? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, call here alumni tech dot net. So notice what it's doing here is it's trying to verify it says uh, is a subdomain of the primary domain. To set up a subdomain, please use the subdomain feature found on the cPanel tab. So see here it's not allowing me to assign the domains. So what I'm going to do is this is where every um, cPanel is different. So I'm going to go to a subdomain here. Notice appcotech.net is already entered here. And I'm going to go ahead and start with creating that alumni. So notice when I tried to assign a domain that was not registered, it didn't allow me, and it took me to a subdomain. Uh, it's, it's called alumni.abcotech.net. And notice the path to the directory is also called alumni. So it's under the main HTML folder. And I click on Create. And once I click on Create, voila, you'll see the domain has been created. Now that the domain is created, the next thing I need to do is create a user account. Now, most people call it a user account, but I'm going to ask you a question. And you can write it in the comments before I tell you the answer, because I'm going to ask the question and tell you the answer in one minute. So pause that, this video, write your answer in the comments below, and then continue and see if it's right or not. What type of user are we going to create that will be that will have the permissions to upload files to this domain that we just created alumni.apcotech.net okay one two three i'm saying that so that you pause the video and if you selected ftp then your answer is correct uh, if you did not then your answer is incorrect because it's not an email user it's an ftp user so again i'm going back to my cpanel and here's my cPanel. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to skip this splash screen here. And I'm going to look for uh, the, the FTP user. Notice there are marketing, there's mail, and right on the top here is FTP. So I'm going to click on FTP. Uh, FTP user, which stands for File Transfer Protocol, is the user that has permission to upload to files to that domain. So just to match, I'm going to call it alumni uh, usr at appcotech.net. 
Um, they want me to create a password. So notice it's at appcotech.net. So I'm going to create a password. You can let the system generate a password for you. I'm just going to create one of those passwords that I like and which I'm not going to tell you right now. So you'll have to hack my system to get that. Just kidding. And uh, once my password is good, I match all the rules. Notice here in the directory, now it's, it's, going, it's a little light, but remember our directory was public underscore HTML. So we are going to go there, and here's public underscore HTML. And then under that, we had the directory alumni. So we are going to go ahead and select that directory alumni, which is, which is where our domain is created. So the important thing that you need to note here is that when you create a domain, whether it's parked or add-on, you need to specify a root or home directory. When you create an FTP user, you need to specify the home directory for the FTP user, and both must match. If they don't match, your user is going to upload files to a different place on your server, and you are going to check your website on a different place. Remember, a web server also has their own folders. So it's, if you placed all your, let's say, your resume in a folder called Documents, and then you go and check in Downloads and come to me and say, I can't find my resume. Well, obviously, you're not checking in the right place. So your domain, home directory, and your FTP user's home directory must match. Now, you can decide to keep the quota unlimited. I never do. So I'm going to keep, give this user 2,000 megabytes of space. Remember, it can be changed at any time. Now I can click Create FTP Account. Now, notice once this account is created, my domain has been created. If I now open up a new tab and just type alumni dot appcotech.net right now because there's nothing on there you're going to see a, a, a blank come up but it did not say page cannot be found it, it gave us a blank server which means it's a blank file now now what we can do is we can go in and and go to the home place and some companies will provide to you a, a tool to install WordPress. Now you can do it manually, and of course that's going to be a different video altogether to do it manually, uh, because you have to start with a database and then extract the files. So someday, if you want me to show the WordPress installation manually, write down in the comments, make a request, and I'll go ahead and do that. Um, but for now, I'm using a tool. This is a tool from a company called Mojo. So I clicked on Install WordPress, as you, can, as you saw on my screen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click Get Started. But remember, before we install WordPress, our domain should already be there. So here I am. I'm going to scroll down and look for the domain we just created, which is alumni.appcotech.net. And here, I found it. This time, I don't need to specify a directory because I wanted to post it directly on alumni. I'm going to click Next. You'll notice that when you click Next, it, it's going to install, it says you want the, verb, the file to be empty, I'm going to say yes, and now I'm going to click next again, and now it wants a site title, so I'm going to say Abco Technology, um, I want to use underscore here, underscore technology, underscore alumni. Uh, they want an email address, now remember, we created an FTP user called alumni at abcotech.net, so we're going to use the same one, alumni at abcotech.net. And, and, and then, once we're done, it's, it's, I want to create the admin email address as alumni at abcotech.net. Now, it wants a password. Uh, this is a, a standard admi admin password it generated for me. And I'm going to basically change that and keep something simple. You're going to see the password right now, uh, uh, you know. But um, you know, we're just going to go ahead and call it Abco, um, or in Inglewood. So I'm going to call it Abco Inglewood, and 2019. So that's my password. Um, of course, I'm going to change it right after I finish recording the video, so you don't have to try it na right now. But so I created this admin user account. I created my site title. I specified a password. 
and now I'm going to go ahead and click next and uh, it says the password is too long uh, so let's just go ahead and make it something simple so let's say we go ahead and uh, yeah we'll use uh, Abco and 2019 and uh, and then um, I'm going to put an exclamation at the end and again I click next and it's preparing the installation you notice that it says 45 percent here now if I want I can select a WordPress theme here um, I'm not going to right now because my goal is to install so I'm waiting so you see up top here it says WordPress is installing browse our items and you know once WordPress is installed I'm going to show you the same tab where we went there we're going to basically go to that same place and then log in as admin and you'll have your whole WordPress dashboard so um, then you can go ahead and attach any theme to it install plugins and make a fully functional website so you notice here the installation is complete continue browsing the marketplace view credentials here uh, so I've clicked on it and I'm going to go ahead and now go back to that sa same site hit hit refresh and notice website coming soon admin login I'm going to click on admin login once I click on the admin login I'm going to enter my username which was alumni at apcotech.net and then I'm going to go ahead and enter the password that we set up and here you go and once I'm, I'm done with that I'm going to go ahead and click login and I'm not going to save the password I generally don't and voila notice here you have your dashboard all set up your WordPress is all installed you have your dashboard you can go ahead and click on pages you can go ahead and click on appearance I'll click on themes select a certain theme that you have one of the most common theme is the is the 2017 uh, right now they have the 2019 theme where we can basically go ahead and use the 2017 theme just to show once that's done if you want to check your website you can you can preview the website right from here and this is right now the theme that they have once I change my home page I won't have this theme I can customize it to whatever I want so anyway that's basically how to create domains and install WordPress if you have any other requests you know put them down into the comments and pretty soon we're gonna have some more exciting videos because we're getting a lot of emails from from different viewers requesting so all these topics I'm creating are from those viewers so if you are wanna go ahead and do that do the same thing and until then ciao